Welcome back. So this is the first video of chapter 8, and chapter 8 is all about the Phillips curve. Now, if you remember from chapter 2, where we introduced the concept of the Phillips curve, the Phillips curve is about the relationship between the unemployment rate and inflation. And there's no, I mean, there's no real sort of obvious reason uh, that inflation should be related to unemployment. Um, this was a, a relationship that was first noticed in the 50s, as we'll talk about. Um, and then it seemed to be quite strong in the United States data when looking at sort of the 40s, 50s, 60s. Um, and then it fell apart. And so we'll talk about both why we think there should be a relationship, theoretically, why it seems to have fallen apart in the 70s and 80s, and why, uh, and sort of the best way to think about it going forward. Um, so if we uh, just to review the sort of history, uh, A.W. Phillips found this sort of negative relationship between inflation and unemployment. He was, I think, a New Zealand uh, economist who was looking at uh, data from uh, the UK, sort of, you know, the UK countries uh, around the world. Um, and then Paul Samuelson and Robert Solo called this the, the Phillips curve, and it really became important uh, in the way that the Federal Reserve uh, started thinking about the, the trade-off between unemployment and inflation. And this is important, right, because remember, the Federal Reserve has a so-called dual mandate. They have two jobs. Uh, one is full employment, um, and so we have to think about, all right, how do we think about full employment? Because we probably don't mean, you know, 100% of workers working. Um, but something close to that. And then price stability, right? And so how do we think about price stability? Should that be zero inflation? Um, should it be 2% inflation? Should it be 4% inflation? And so this relationship is really important for monetary policy. All right, so here we have a graph of the unemployment rate uh, on the horizontal axis and the inflation rate on the vertical axis, which is the way we usually graph the Phillips curve. Um, although sometimes you will see employment on the, the horizontal axis, so it'll be inverted. Um, and you can see there seems to be a downward relationship between uh, inflation and unemployment, so that when the unemployment rate is high, uh, the inflation rate is low, and when uh, the unemployment rate is low, inflation is high. Um, these triangles in the data are the Great Depression, so that's the 1930s, and this is data that goes from 1900 to 1960. So uh, this is sort of the, the data that Solo uh, and Samuelson were looking at. Um, and you can see, I mean, it's not a perfect relationship, right? I mean, it's not a, a line by any stretch of the imagination. It's probably not as tight a relationship as, say, Oaken's Law in, uh, you know, changes in the unemployment rate and GDP growth. But it does definitely seem like there's a relationship. And so we want to think about that. So we're going to use our model from chapter seven of the wage and price determination um, and think about how that, how we can take, you know, the unemployment rate from uh, our wage determination equation and combine it with uh, the price determination equation and get this relationship between uh, inflation and the unemployment rate. So Remember, in Chapter 7, we sort of assumed that expected inflation, expected price level was equal to the actual price level. We're not going to make that assumption anymore. So now what we're going to do is we're going to substitute in our equation for the wage, uh, which is the expected price level times our function of the unemployment rate and our catch-all variable Z, everything else that affects the, uh, the labor market. And we're going to plug it into equation 7.3 here. And so we end up with our price level is equal to the expected price level times one plus the markup, right? So the markup is a measure of how much competition there is. Um, less competition will be a higher markup. Uh, more competition will be a lower markup times our function of uh, the unemployment rate in Z. So now we're going to make a specific form assumption about F just to uh, make it easier. Um, Obviously, it doesn't really matter how we throw in Z because Z is a catch-all variable, but we're going to assume this sort of linear negative relationship in the unemployment rate. Now, as you saw from the data, right, it's clearly not just a linear relationship, um, but 
that will simplify things. It will allow us to get a solution uh, for the Phillips curve and we'll take it from there. So now we have the price level P is equal to the expected price level times one plus the markup times this F function, which now is pretty simple in terms of its uh, form. So it's just one minus alpha times the unemployment rate. So alpha is just some parameter plus Z. And remember Z is still our catch all variable. Now we want to think about this in terms of inflation. We're going to sort of skip over the derivation of this, but basically when we're taking differences, right? Remember, inflation is a difference um, and we have uh, things that are multiplied together. Uh, they become sums. So if we put this in terms of inflation and expected inflation, inflation is equal to expected inflation plus M plus Z. So we're just combining this M and this Z minus alpha times U. So the idea here is we're getting this negative relationship that we expect um, between inflation and the unemployment rate because of this negative sign here. So let's think about what this means then. An increase in expected inflation leads to an increase in inflation and in actual inflation. Why might this be? Well, if firms think, all right, inflation is going to be 3%, I'm going to increase my prices by 3%. If workers think inflation is going to be 3%, I'm going to demand a 3% higher wage, then prices go up by 3%, right? So basically there's a one-to-one -one relationship between expected inflation and actual inflation. This is going to be really important uh, when we think about Fed policy because the Federal Reserve needs to convince the economy that what it says it's going to do, it is going to do so that inflationary expectations don't become too high, right? And this is really what happened in the 70s and um, early 80s was that inflation expectations kept going up and we'll talk about that. Um, and then inflation kept going up. There were other factors as well, right? There was obviously the, um, you know, the sort of two oil crises, uh, but in expected inflation played a key role. So given our expected inflation, right? So, you know, now we could say maybe expected inflation is around 2%, then an increase in the markup or an increase in Z, our catch-all variable leads to an increase inflation. Uh, and given all of that, a decrease in the unemployment rate leads to an increase in inflation, right? So it's negative there, negative alpha times UT. So when the unemployment rate goes down, inflation goes up. When the unemployment rate goes up, inflation goes down. And so all we're doing here in equation 8.3 is putting a T index, right? And so just remember T is just measuring over uh, a specific time. Um, so, you know, inflation gets reported every month and so does unemployment. But when we look for Phillips curve data, I would say at the best it becomes evident uh, quarterly and really annual data is um, you can really find the Phillips curve uh, most easily with annual data.